What's up everyone, Patrick here. Welcome back. Moving on to another question dealing with the chain rule. So we have to find dy dx when x is equal to three if we have these three different functions here. So y equals u to the power of five plus u to the power of three u is equal to 5 over v minus 2v, and then v is equal to 8 minus x squared. So usually, most questions, we're given two functions. Notice in this case, we're given three functions. And so there's going to be three different chains when we do the chain rule here. So notice we have dy by dx. So what we're first going to have to find is dy by du, and then we would multiply that by du of dv, and then we'd multiply that by dv of dx, like that, right? And so notice when you multiply these, you could sort of look at it like you're crossing these out, right? The du's, then you're crossing out the dv's, and you're left with the dy by dx, what we're being asked for over here. So we're going to have to find the derivatives of all of these, but then we're also going to have to plug in values into all of these. Now notice that the derivative, so for example, dy by du, it's going to be in terms of u. And then the du dv, it's going to be in terms of v. And then the du dx is going to be in terms of x. So what we have to do first is we have to find the value of v and the value of u that we'll be plugging in at the end into those derivatives before finding them. So we know we're going to be plugging in x is equal to 3. But then what are we going to be plugging in for v? Well, we could figure that out by taking this x value of 3 and plugging it in for this x, right? So we'd have 8 minus 3 squared, which would be like 8 minus 9, which would give us negative 1. So that's what we're going to be plugging in. We're going to be plugging in negative 1 for the v value once we find this derivative, because that's going to be in terms of v. And then what are we going to plug in for u? Well, what we can do is we could take this negative 1 for v and plug, me, and plug it in over here. So we'd have 5 over negative 1 minus 2 times negative 1, which would be like negative 5 plus 2, right? And then that would give us negative 3. So for u, we're going to be plugging in negative 3. So I wanted to get those values first before we find these derivatives. And so now we can go into finding what's dy by du going to be. Well, it's going to be the derivative of this. So here we would just use the power rule on these. So we bring the 5 down. So we'd have 5u to the power of 4 plus 3u squared, like that. So that's what dy du is. What's du dv going to be? It's going to be the derivative of this. So what I'm going to do is rewrite this as 5v to the negative 1. So I'm going to bring this v up. It's like v to the power of negative 1 minus 2v. And so what we would do, bring the negative 1 down. Negative 1 times 5 gives us negative 5, and then we would subtract 1 from that exponent. Minus, what's the derivative of 2v? That's just 2. So this would end up being negative 5 over v squared minus 2, if you want to put it in a nicer format. So this is going to be negative v, or negative 5 rather, over v squared uh, minus 2, like that. So that's du dv. And then what is du dx going to be? It's going to be the derivative of this, derivative of 8, 0. The derivative of negative x squared is negative 2x, like that. So that's what du dx is going to be. So this is the expression here in terms of u, v, and x for dy dx. That's the general expression. Right, so we just use the chain rule here. Another way you can do this, uh, I don't recommend doing it this way, but you will end up getting the uh, same answer, is you can make a function of y in terms of x. But then what you would have to do is you'd have to first plug this. This is v right here, right? So we could plug it in over here. 
right? So you'd plug in eight minus x squared for this denominator and then over here for this v. And then you would take that whole expression for u and then plug it in here and plug it in there. And then you could just derive that and then everything's gonna be in terms of x and then you could plug in an x value of three. Again, I don't recommend doing it like that creating that big composite function, I feel like deriving all of these separately is better. You're working with different variables, so that's a bit of a headache, but it's not too bad when you know what values for each of those variables you're gonna plug in. Okay, so what's left to do is find dy dx when what? X is equal to three. And so we would plug in again for u, uh, give me a sec, yeah, we're plugging in negative 3, so we'd have 5, negative 3 to the power of 4, plus 3, times negative 3 to the power of 2, like that, and then we'd have negative 5 over, what's v? Negative 1, that's going to be negative 1 squared, minus 2, and then we'll have minus 2 times that x value of 3. Right, three different variables that we plugged in right there. And then when you work with those brackets separately, this whole bracket here, it's gonna end up being 432. This bracket here would end up being negative seven. This bracket would be negative six. Then when you multiply all those, you get 18,144. All right, so just be on the lookout. Sometimes you'll be given three different functions, but then it's just three different chains to work with. The same process applies, you're just working with more variables.